Welcome to Better Relationships, Better Life, where relationships expert Judy K. Herman and her guests share insights that can help you move through conflicts in your 9 to 5 jobs and your 24 7 lives. Crack the clarity code and create deeper connections beyond the messiness of relationships. Here's your host, Judy K. Herman. We are tuning in to part two of Breaking Free from Secrecy and Shame. Keep in mind, we're talking about sensitive topics. This is not only for couples, but it is for colleagues and clergy. If you're in a leadership position, it's important to look at issues that may be affecting your organization. As a speaker and executive coach, I'm available to support you. To know more about how I can help your company with communication and relationships, just go to judyspeaker.com. If you've not heard part one of this series, you'll want to go back and listen. Again, we're addressing sensitive topics in part two of Breaking Free, subtitled Healing for Children and Faith Communities. Our conversation continues with Kirsten and Dave Samuel, who minister to others through their courageous journey from the effects of pornography and depression. We left last time with the idea there's a story that's bigger than our pain. Kirsten and Dave show us what's on the other side of this gut level transparency. Let's listen in. But it was such a pivotal question to me Mm. coming from my son and to say, you know, love is is a choice. It's an act of the will. It is not an emotion. And we have it so mixed up. And right now I'm choosing to stay with your dad. I'm choosing to believe we can come back from this. I don't know how, Mm. but I'm making that choice because honestly, at that point, I didn't like him. You know, I didn't, I didn't didn't. want to be with him, (laughs) you know, and, and I was still dealing. And this was, you know, this was in the middle of me finally going to get this diagnosis of the suicidal depression. Wow. And, um, and so I was still in this complete denial mode of, you know, you haven't dealt with this stuff in your, your life yet either. Mm. And so to, to, to have that question and to be really put on the spot and, and realize that something is bigger here. Yeah. Yeah. That, Mm -hmm. that is so touching. Dave, how are you doing as we talk about all this right now? (laughs) You know what? I tell people, you know, Hey, if you're, you're a couple, you're showing up on this podcast, you're going to probably feel like a client of mine too. (laughs) I'm going to ask you, how are you feeling as we talk about all this? (laughs) You know, it's, it's part of what we, what, what we've gone through Mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, it's, it's not pleasant, you know, to know what I have done to Kirsten and to the family, but at the same time, it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I look back, you know, and, and like any addiction, mm-hmm. pornography was my medication of choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And while I don't know when, you know, I, I, okay, I was exposed at five. I don't know if it's, if that's when pornography grabbed me, mm-hmm. but I mm-hmm. know my life from that point on of, of being a small skinny kid that was picked on, mm-hmm. um, of not really fitting in, not being, uh, sports. I wasn't great at sports. I didn't like sports. I was more into arts and music mm-hmm. and, and that, and so never felt like I quite fit in mm-hmm. the, in, in manhood, so to speak. Um, I did have a father who called me out into manhood. So that was, that was mm-hmm. a great thing. Mm-hmm but it was always a medication to numb the pain of always feeling different. And Mm. and that was a lot of the inferiority that I felt was because that's where it came from. So I had to do a lot of work with that of, Mm -hmm. of who am I, uh, who am I in Christ? Who am I as, as a man? Um, these are the gifts and abilities that I've been given for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so how do I use them to, one, to, to call my sons out into manhood, Mm -hmm. but also to be vulnerable and to be transparent to say, Hey, I blew it. And, you know, if, if you're dealing with this, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And that to uh, me, I think, let me hold that Dave, because mm -hmm. that to me is like, when you can be vulnerable as a man, that is calling a man into manhood. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I'm telling you, I've heard all kinds of stories and you all probably have heard a lot of stories yourself, but some, some people's 
calling their sons into manhood would be to expose them to pornography, which is a really horrible thing. But Mm -hmm. anyway, um, but that's not the kind of calling into manhood you're talking about. (laughs) Like, okay, I got to be macho and disconnected from your emotions and, Mm -hmm. you know, go out and shoot a deer or something and and mount the deer on your you know, get it stuffed, whatever. That's not, that's not what you're talking about when you say Colin, why don't you, why don't you exp- uh, explain what does that mean to you being called into manhood mm-hmm. or calling your own sons into that? Yeah. You know, we're all different and, and my sons are gifted differently than I. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I mean by that, is, and I think I talk about, I talk about authentic manhood of, of being who you were made to be mm. of, of being, um, the leader, the, the spiritual leader in the home, but also a spouse, mm-hmm. a coworker, a mm-hmm. co-laborer. We're working together on the same team. And what does that look like? You know, mm-hmm. um, not saying I'm the man, I have to do everything, but to say, okay, I'm a man, I'm gifted this way. I will function in that, but my wife is also gifted in areas that I'm not. So mm-hmm. let's, let me, play to her strengths and she plays to my strengths and together the team is stronger. Um, and, and so calling my sons out into manhood and, and, and to relate to my daughter in a way to make her feel special as, as a woman of God, but applying and, and appealing to my son's interests and how they were made to say, okay, this, this is how you're made, but this is how you can be used to strengthen your relationship with your wife and to, to be co-laborers, not to lord it over them, but to learn to live with each other in an understanding way. Love that. Love that, David, because that's so needed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And, and I believe what you, you two have done for your family is you've made it, you've, you've shown up with all the stuff, the raw and real things, and you've shown them how that, you know what, we can face this, we can deal with this, we can grow through it, we can become resilient and grow beyond, Mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely huge. And what a gift that is. Mm -hmm. So something that went on with me, I want to kind of shift a minute, because I hear a lot of stories, I I do live in the belt buckle of the Bible belt South. So I do, um, I, I've, you know, counseled with pastors, clergy, people in ministry for many years. And, and I've heard stories on, on the other side. So what I think is amazing about your story is that you had an accountability group, you had Mm -hmm. a support system, and so many people go to their churches and try to find support. But lo and behold, you know, un- undercurrent, there's some stuff going on mm-hmm. in the leadership at church mm-hmm. and right. then they get shamed. And so can you speak to that? Because that was maybe I'm thinking that I don't know if that's unique. It would be nice if it weren't unique, that there could be this trusted group. So that's one thing, but I'm thinking everybody in that group you met with on a regular basis for, I don't know, two years or how many ever long, however mm-hmm. long it was, they, mm-hmm. they knew you really well. Mm-hmm. I would imagine your stuff that you were dealing as a couple and individually had to have touched them to a deeper level themselves, rather than them saying, you know, kind of lording over you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to kind of weave together here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and, and you're right. We and really finding the group was a miracle (laughs) in and of itself, because like so many that are hiding addictions and struggling with their own stuff, we, we had become so isolated we didn't know mm-hmm. couples. We didn't have mm-hmm. couples that we enjoyed being with. I mean, I enjoyed, you know, being with, with the husband, but Kirsten didn't like the wife or she enjoyed the wife. I didn't care for the husband. And so for but they have kind of, kids that your kids don't belong. Yeah, or exactly. They don't play well with. I know <laughs> right. that it's like, it's harder to connect, you know, yeah. friendship wise as you go through your stage. Yeah. So to find three couples that we could both agree on, mm-hmm. which was the main thing, um, was very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one couple was the one that was the gentleman that helped me formulate the plan that at a breakfast, the, the day before I had to present it or the morning, morning before yeah. I had to present it. Uh, another one was this co- counselor's couple that we had first seen the third couple. We had no idea. And mm. we really had to, we really had to pray and just ask, okay, who is this? And mm. as it turns out was a couple that 
we both weren't really close with, but we, we liked both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And come to find out that they had also dealt with, I don't think per pornography mm -hmm. per se, but they had difficulty in their marriage early on. So, and they had had a couple that actually helped them. Mm -hmm. And so their whole thing was, this was, this was given to us. We're going to give this to someone else now. Mm -hmm. wow. So that it was, a, it was a real gift, but you're right. It's hard and it takes mm -hmm. because of the isolation. And I think mm -hmm. that's the danger mm -hmm. of it where, when you realize that you look around, you think, oh, we don't know anybody that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's a danger sign of you're getting mm -hmm. too isolated. And I would say that the, these couples were not in the church, in, the, in our church. Okay. They were, um, well, two, one of them was, one was, yeah. um, but these were people that we knew, um, from other associations. And, um, because honestly, Judy, we didn't get a whole lot of help from our church. Mm. And that's one of the, the passions that I have that we have is to, to work with churches and to say, it doesn't have to be this way. Mm. We can, we can come in and we can, we can help and we can, there are ways that you can be prepared, that you can, that you can, um, help your, the people who come to you, because I hear that a lot. You know, I went and I went and tried, I went to my church and I tried to find somebody that could help me. And, and especially for women, you know, all I got was, well, you just need to forgive him and move on. And it's mm. like, yeah, well, no, there's a little bit more than that that yeah, needs to go absolutely. into this. Oh. And so we were really thankful for these three couples mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they came together. They, they, you know, two of them knew each other, but they, all three of them didn't have a connection. Their connection was this broken couple who was yes. a mess mm -hmm. and really in, in, you know, in, in trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, and they really came around us in such a beautiful way. And then to allow them to meet with our counselor, um, the, cause we did go through intensive marriage counseling and, uh, and then we, mm -hmm. we just highly believe in it. We, mm -hmm. we promote it. Um, you know, you need someone Absolutely. when you're in this crisis, you need people that will, will tell you the truth mm -hmm. and go through the hard stuff with you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but we, we wanted the group to know, we wanted the counselor to know what the group had found. And so, I mean, with all the HIPAA laws and everything yes. else, you, you, know, all sorts of things. you know, it, yeah. it was very unusual, but we wanted that connection. So there wasn't anything hidden right. from the counselor to the group and from the group to the counselor. Hmm. And so that was a, an interesting step that, that we took. Yeah. But we don't regret it. Oh my goodness. Let, let me ask you to because you're, you would be a seasoned marriage, right? You've been through your, your stuff. How would you, how would you describe your marriage now having gone through this healing versus where you were before? Do you ever long to be in those, the, the before places? No, never. Okay. We, we don't have the same marriage that we had before. The one mm. that we had before was broken. Um, wow. Oh, we, I want to hold, I want to hold this. What you just said, Kirsten is really profound. You don't have the same marriage. Mm -mm. You don't have the same marriage, like same guy, different marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, still, but, but, but still a different man as well. Right. Yeah, we're, right. Well, both a, a different, different woman. woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. how many, uh, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to play around with you. <laughs> How many marriages have you two gone through together? <laughs> oh, I think each day is different. Each day is different. You know, it's, it's like I said, it's a choice. It's mm -hmm. a choice. And, you know, we, we, we tell couples all the time, we wouldn't wish what we went through on our worst enemies mm. because it was, it was very painful. It is painful to have to reveal the things that you've been hiding. You know, at that point we were in our mid forties, mm. you know, mm -hmm. And, and we, so, you know, you're I've just been, in your mid forties now, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this happened yesterday, right? <laughs> this happened yesterday. You know, a lot but, of growth. A lot of growth. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. That, that huge growth spurt. Um, no, but you know, you, you got, you get so used to being in those rhythms, to being in those mm. habits, to, to just completely discarding and, and, and disregarding you know, the things that are, that if anybody found out about them, they would reject me. That was my biggest mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to find out 
through these, these people that came around us at the time that we could tell them the truth and Mm. we did not get rejected because that's the big lie is if I tell the truth, I'm going to be completely cut off. Mm. And we found the exact opposite. Wow. Not with everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sugarcoat this at all. There were people Mm -hmm. that, you know, have distanced and stuff like that, but, or there were people that I think couldn't accept what we were saying because of their own pain Mm -hmm. that they had Mm -hmm. unresolved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That comes out. And that's why people Mm -hmm. do like they, they want armed systems. Whoa, I don't want anything to do with this. This is going to do something to me. Yeah. 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 Wow. But, but to me, I think this is like, the, the story is so profound and your healing journey is so remarkable because it demonstrate it, it, it on this level demonstrates what we all long for. We all long to be loved and accepted in within our marriages, like how to have mm-hmm. that kind of transparency, I think is not easy. <laughs> it's not, it's, well, and it's still not easy, right? No, well, no there, because, because again, it, when you're, when you're going to be that vulnerable, when you're mm. going to say, I'm not going to hide anything, that is a huge risk. It is it's a huge mm-hmm. risk. Mm-hmm. Dave had to risk, you know, I remember, um, when we were standing, you know, when we would have these mandated questions from our counselor during mm. the, the, the intensive time. That sounds so harsh. <laughs> mandated <laughs> mandated well, it was harsh. <laughs> it was harsh, oh but we'd have to sit down and look at each other and And, you know, one of the questions that I had for Dave was, okay, I need you to tell me Mm. how far did this go? Mm. Because we mentioned pornography is a progressive addiction. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. starts in one area, but unchecked, it's going to go, you know, along a a different road. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to sit there and listen Mm. and not, not do what I wanted to do. And I didn't do this well, but what I wanted to do was rail and scream and throw things Mm -hmm. my eyes out, rip his Mm -hmm. eyes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not do that. But then to realize I had things I had to reveal to him. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and to, at that point, you have a choice when these things start coming out, when these things that you've been hiding from each other start coming out, you have the, the, the person listening the spouse who's receiving the information has a choice in that moment to forgive mm-hmm. and to choose to love that, love the mess that's in your spouse mm-hmm. or to mm-hmm. reject. Mm-hmm. And so every time you share something like this, we were both in that very tender, wow, unknowing place of, am I going to be received or am I going to be rejected? And that's something that really needs the safety net mm-hmm. of a counselor yes. because mm-hmm. there's, there's, right. there's a, a readiness and, and if you're not ready and you don't know how to process it, it is too mm-hmm. much to do. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Remarkable, remarkable. So let me ask you this. I'm so curious about how, um, like what you have to offer, what, what would you want your, these listeners to know? Let's just say somebody is listening to this right now and they have this gut punch right now from listening to your story. What piece of advice, what can you tell them at this point? I think for the, for the, the spouse, and I'll just say that because it can be be men or women. Yeah. To the spouse there is hope there is, you can get through this. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to take a lot of work, but it is redeemable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, we were, we've, yeah. And it's just, you have to put in the work mm. You're going, and it's, and you have to put in the eyes, you have to risk being hurt. You have mm. to, you know, as Kirsten was talking about, you know, I just, I had the, the image of, you know, saying something and then (laughs) cringing, (laughs) waiting for the, you know, to get smacked. But, uh, and and yeah, so that's, there is hope. And and the other thing I would say um, for the spouse that is caught up in the addiction is that it does not have to define you. 
Mm, that's um, that's profound. You, it does not have to define you. Yes. Now it, I, it, I look back and I say, yes, that is who I that that is what I did, but that is not who I am. Wow. And uh, that the that's, growth that comes from that brings you to that point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A- absolutely. Mm-hmm. You are so much more as a human being, yeah. more through, than through your grace. past. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, Kirsten, yeah. do you have anything to add to it? Dave that was pretty, said, that was pretty good. Um, I, I think it was great. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I would, I would say, um, first of all, that the worst thing you can do is to stay quiet. Oh my gosh. You are right. Isolation mm-hmm. is your biggest enemy, isn't mm-hmm. it? It is your biggest enemy. Mm. If you think, if you look at the animal kingdom and the predators, when a lion mm. is stalking a herd, who's he looking for? The straggler, mm-hmm. the one who's isolated. Wow. That's exactly what's happening to mm. us when we isolate. The common, the common um, understanding and the, you know, the common thing is just don't talk about it. This is the, we don't talk about these things. It'll go away. Mm-hmm. It'll just go away. It won't go away. That's the, t- that's a re-traumatizing actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, the statistic I read um, when I was doing a lot of initial research and, and growing and learning about addiction and about trauma, and this came from the Gottman Institute, but that married couples that um, are experiencing difficulty, whether it is pornography addiction, another addiction, just, you know, screaming, fighting, all this other stuff, wait six years. Yeah. I have that. Actually, I have that research in my book. <laughs> I do too. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yes. Anybody who's writing books will definitely quote some of Gottman's research yes. for sure. <laughs> definitely. That is absolutely true. I do want to show, I want to show folks the cover of your book here, choosing a way out in case anybody would like to order that on Amazon. But uh, this has been remarkable because I, I have, I want, if we had more time, I did want to ask because me writing my mm-hmm. book beyond messy relationships was a huge, like writing the book itself was transformational for me. I'm wondering if that's what your experience was, because there's one thing about having your little accountability group and having people, but then you're putting it out there. Yeah, Yeah. no, there were, Dave will tell you, um, I sat and wrote a lot of the book on my laptop, sitting on our bed in our bedroom. I just, I, I just needed to have a place where I could shut all the doors and, and be in what I considered a safe and my safe place. Mm-hmm. And, um, he would come home from work and he'd come in there. And when I cry, it's the ugly mm-hmm. cry, you know, mm-hmm. so you <laughs> I know. know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'd be sitting there and he'd walk in, he opened in the door and, you know, I got the red splotchy face. I got snot all over the place, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going, <laughs> As I'm writing this, and there were times I remember um, reaching out to my coach and saying, I can't do this. Mm. And, and the, the encouragement came back and said, you're not doing it for anybody, but you, mm. you're not doing it for anyone, but you. And what I found, and I'm sure what you found Judy in writing this was as painful as it was as difficult and, and as difficult as it was even to sit down with Dave and talk about sections in the book. Mm the growth that happened, the next layer of peeling back the pain, the next layer of healing that came about, I don't think we would have managed any other way. Mm, It mm -hmm. was, it was cathartic. It was excruciating. There were times that I laughed. There were times that I I couldn't even see the keyboard for the tears. Wow. Um, But at the same time, I knew that if no one ever read it, that was fine. It was, it was what I had to get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I tell, I tell the clients that I work with all the time and we tell them all the time is don't keep it bottled up, get it out. And I started journaling during this time. I haven't stopped since then. And that, that process of writing the chaos that's going on inside and getting it out again, nobody has to ever read it. I'm not telling you that if you write it, it's going to be published, right? That's your choice. Right. But, right. Um, but getting it out and getting that process is so healing. It, it is. I mean, I have my clients do that for sure. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it is something that really is good for your mental health. Mm-hmm. So if, if, yeah, anybody that, you know, to start journaling and getting those thoughts out, it makes, it helps you sort things out. So this is beautiful. And thank you so much, you two for showing showing up and showing up your real selves and giving people permission. You know what, this is, this is good. This is a a journey. Yeah, it's tough, 
but you can do it. You're, there is hope and there's, there's transformation on the other side. And uh, not, not a fixed marriage, but a, a no. different marriage. <laughs> it's a, it's a brand that. new, yeah, it's a brand new marriage. It's, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, yes. We say now we laugh now in the last 15 years, we have fought more than we did in the first 25. <laughs> and when I say fight, I don't mean knock down, drag out, but we, we, we don't see eye to eye on everything because we're not supposed to. Right. We are two individual people. And like Dave said, he has strengths. I have strengths. And the cool thing is, is that when we find that sweet spot in the middle, when we both come together and we find that solution in the middle, it's better than what either one of us ever came up with. Mm-hmm. That is gold. That is so true. That is so true. The, that space between you two, the, the relationship is that that's amazing. That's that is amazing. Thank you so much. How can folks get in touch with you? Uh, you can just hop over to my website. It's Kirsten D Samuel.com and it's K I R S T E N D as in David Samuel S A M U E L.com. And there's a contact place there. There's some, there's lots of free resources on the website. Please take advantage of it. Absolutely. And I'm on social media. Same, same thing. Kirsten D Samuel. Um, and, uh, I'd love to answer any questions. If people have questions, um, you know, the book is out there. There's nothing that we have to hide. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes. And it's available. And all of this is going to be in the show notes, by the way. Thank you two so much, David. Thanks, Judy. And, uh, Thanks, Kristen, Judy. you two are a special couple for sure. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Even though this series addresses extremely sensitive topics, you likely notice the lighthearted interaction with Kirsten and Dave. Here's something to keep in mind with both of these episodes. Even though going through the process of breaking free from shameful secrets is difficult, life can be so much better as a result. It's no accident that you listened in today. Next week is actually perfect timing for my conversation with Dr. Debbie Silber in the five stages from betrayal to post-betrayal transformation. You'll get clarity about where you are now and how to get to your better life. Remember to share your takeaways by going to betterrelationshipsbetterlife.com. Keep in mind, you're not alone. There's hope and you're worth it. Until then, feel free to share, subscribe, rate, and comment. See you next time for Better Relationships, Better Life.